fortune awaits in Blood and Plunder. Set sail in the golden age of piracy and claim the riches of the Caribbean at beastsofwar.com. A world of hideous nightmares awaits in Kingdom Death Monster. Fight to survive or fade into darkness at the Kingdom Death Hub at beastsofwar.com. Hey everyone, it's Az here and you're about to join us for a bit of game hacking this really is. We're about to get into some drafting with light seekers. We've got Justin, Benny and Colin and we each have five, well the three of us anyway, Benny's keeping us right, five booster packs for light seekers. Now anyone who's not familiar with how drafting works, the premise is that in each one of these packs there are nine cards. What we'll do is we'll open up one of the packs, choose a card for ourselves and the remaining eight cards will be passed to the person to your left. We will continue doing that, going through eight, seven, six, until you have nine cards that one by one you have crafted. Mm -hmm. What will happen then is you'll move on to the second pack. It'll get opened, you'll pick a card, and then pass it to the right. And we'll continue alternating until basically we've gone through all five packs each, drafted our own deck of cards, and we'll have 45 cards in front of us. What we then have to do is make that into a workable, usable, real fighty, who could do the best, 35 card Light Seeker deck. So basically, what we need right now from Colin, um, because you're here, I'm going to say this, I need a little Frankenstein right now. It's alive! <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be very different to what you normally see when you're playing standard light seekers or even tournament light seekers if you're into that kind of scene as well. What are the nuances? What makes draft special as it currently stands? Because we know draft in the future might be a little different. Yeah, so uh, for the current set, the way draft works is that you have access to all elements. So everything goes. Aww. There's also no restriction on number of combos you can have. So you could have all combos in theory. So not five no, uh, out so of 35? Yeah, uh, you love duplicates, you can have as many as you want. Uh, can you play as many as you want, or is that still a uh, rule? There's still the rule on two actions per turn, a combo okay. consumes more, okay. uh, but you could play one combo after another. Okay, mm. okay. Uh, uh, as long as it's on your turn each. Okay. Um, so yeah, by default you have access to all the elements. Uh, you also start with 25 health, however okay. you may pick up to two heroes. Okay. Uh, so two as opposed to one. And your starting health is the greater of those two values. All right. And you have access to both of their passive traits or abilities. Ooh. Uh, in addition to any superior stats they might have. So any superior elements on your heroes are now unlimited in terms okay. of how many you can play using your actions. Right. Because uh, each one of these comes with a hero, so there's yes. a real incentive to actually get a couple of heroes that synergize or yes. might work well. Very much so. Mm -hmm. um, and even if you pick heroes, you still have access to all the elements. So either way, all wow. elements, as many combos as you want, as many duplicates as you want. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the draft, and this takes a little bit of time because we're going to have to think a little bit about what we're doing as we go. I guess, mm. I guess, I guess there's, a, there's a strategy to the draft for sure. The heart versus mind battle. Oh, it's pretty. I want that one. Uh, versus the strategy. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sit down with Benny and we're going to try and take each of our sets of 45 cards and try and make them into decks. Uh, 9 times 5, that's 35 cards? Well, it's 45 here. 9 times 5 is 45. And then you have to you have ten that you'll be able to put okay. aside. I've probably m missed on that. Okay, don't worry, you're grand. <laughs> so uh, uh, I do have one question, yeah. Benny. You still have the the three type limit in the deck? Uh, no, you can have as many oh. of the same copy as you want. Wow. Okay. Uh, unlikely, perhaps, but might happen. Okay. Right, there is one other possible. I just realised in case we mentioned earlier on, Benny told me there is one card which is too strong in draft. It's been banned, right? Yes. There's one banned card which is Cecilia. Okay. It's a nature hero. Her build is to discard one card to heal for four. Oh, she's not allowed. So Cecilia, she's a green nature hero. Yep. If we see her, essentially that's a dead card. So pass it on. Pass it on, and someone. Yeah. <laughs> Although it is a rare, so you, I mean you might want her anyway. Yeah, <laughs> and this is the thing. This kind of great format. If you're getting into the game and you have a starter, a starter pack, this is a great way to buy five packs, but actually have a bit of fun choosing the cards that you're really interested in, and then walking away with them if you yeah. like to. There's also a great social aspect to this that if you actually go to a draft tournament. By the end of the day, you'll maybe look and start trying to trade back and yeah. forth with people to actually get extra cards in that you're really going to mm -hmm. want to build a specific yeah. type of deck, which is cool. Yeah, be careful because I know you love tech and you know I love mountain. So yeah. if he starts drafting all my mountain cards and I'm like, where are all the mountains? And Justin's like, he <laughs> holding all the mountains. There, there's out. a question. For our draft, will we allow any trades between ourselves? Nah, not nah. for the draft. After the fact, we can, we can trade when we're, when we're building our own decks. But for okay. this, draft format is all about making what you can with what you get. Okay. Shall we? Shall we? Crack the pack! Alright. Oh man, right, this is this is super secret. Okay. Okay, okay. Oh, it's been years since I've done this. Oh, Benny, Benny! Oh, yeah. oh you see, I've got a shiny immediately, and I'm like, what do I do? I've got to take the shiny, right? Okay. 
Okay, Super we'll serious, it. thinky time. One of his favorites. Okay, that's... <laughs> no, that's so mean, man. Oh, man. Now, how do we know the rarity of the cards? Does it tell us by the uh, colour so, in the bottom? Yes, so the colour text at the bottom uh, dictates the rarity. Okay. Uh, white is common, mm -hmm. blue is uncommon, okay. and gold is rare. Okay. So actually, if you weren't if you were kind of unsure about what cards you should draft, if you're like caught going for the rare ones, will be more less common to see. So that might give you a slight advantage if you're uh, stuck. Yeah. So there's a risk with that because quite often rare cards are also a little bit more niche. Yeah. Okay. You know, they have more specific purposes. Mm -hmm. Uh, common cards tend to be more multi-purpose. Okay. Uh, but there are some really nice uh, rare cards that can fit most decks. Oh, man. He's got so much health, he'd be a great hero. All of us are just like... Because we're oh, seeing a lot of cards okay. for the first time. My, my hero is shiny. Oh. Uh, I got, I got that, that it. In fact, in fact, I want you to have a look. Can I get a little advice on should I yeah. keep this? Just, oh, just for this, just for one. Advice. We just get one card. <laughs> that is actually quite nice. <laughs> uh, that was. Uh, you need to make a note to show everyone. So at home that was what the that was. the last card that anyone in the Play Fusion office got. Uh, that is also the shiny one. Yeah. Uh, so I think our CFO ended up buying it for one hundred pounds from someone. What? Wow. Okay, I'm hanging on to that one just because I, I think, I think I look at the ability, I look at the health, I look at the abilities. <laughs> we'll pop that up on screen. Hopefully, Justin was going to remember what. Oh, that no, was. no, no, trust me. I, I remember. Trust remember. me. The, this one is not easy to forget, and it's it's such oh. a beautiful looking card as well. I, the artwork on it is gorgeous. You've, you've yeah. made me so super nervous now, man. I had a couple in mind, <laughs> and now I'm like, ah. Oh. The, the thing is, it's instantly making me think of going a different different direction from what I was thinking. <laughs> I'm going with my heart. I've gone with. I've gone right. shiny too. Yeah, it's all that. Are we all going shiny? <laughs> Are we all just magpies? Is that what's happening? That, what did you pass up on? Well, this is what I took, and this is my hand. Which yeah, because no, I know what he picked, so now I want to see what he didn't take. <laughs> this has gotten far more serious, far quicker than I really would have thought it did. Okay, I'm going to go there. I have, I have a plan. I'm going to see if my plan works. So have you chosen your hero already? Uh, my first one, I'll be honest, was a hero. But don't forget, you can you can have two heroes. Did, Az, did you pass him a hero? I passed him a hero, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, I did. See, that that was the thing. I knew if you yeah. saw my hero, you'd be like, no. Nope. But you see, I know there's 15 heroes are going to pop up. Yeah. Um, so I've got five shots at my hero, and then obviously if you guys hero early. So I'm kind of... If you guys draft heroes fast, and I, I might get better cards, maybe. The, this is the thing as well. If you find a hero that you kind of like early, you can sort of start tailoring what you're doing yeah. to, to fit that hero. That's it. That's it. Like you're just going to oh. wing it until you get the right hero? No. I don't think so. I don't think so. Oh, man. I, oh, no. Man, not happy. Not <laughs> happy with the colors I'm being presented with at all. I'm trying to remember what I saw last time a dick appeared. Oh, you're, re you're actually trying to see what was picked each time? i never going to be able to do that. I'm going for a very, uh, a very disk-based strategy. I think yep. I'm going to go light on those. I, this, is, this is the thing with draft. You can do things that you wouldn't really normally be able to do in a deck if you wanted to make something balanced, which means you make something kind of what I would call a glass cannon, which potentially could do amazingly, but might just fall apart and do nothing. <laughs> I don't want to tie myself down yet. You still got four more packs, but you're mm. like, and again, because you're drawing forty-five and you just have to get to thirty-five, you're still going to have ten cards worth of. You, you know, see, chat. what I've done is with my first drafts, I've looked for abilities that I think are useful, and now I'm looking at the other cards that I need to make those abilities work. Yeah, absolutely, makes perfect sense. Damn, man, I have a rainbow in my pocket. And I'm not happy about it. <laughs> The problem with not picking your hero early, you're like, I'm all right with it. Could it. be anywhere. My hero was not at the start. My hero was not inspirational. He was very much just, ugh. I like my first card. There you go, guys. You can have that. Thanks, buddy. That oh. actually is really not that bad for me. That could come good. All right. I, I actually wanted this one. That's perfect. So on a, <laughs> on a scale of one to ten, one being ugh and ten being wow, how did you feel about the first nine cards? Uh, I'm pretty happy with what I've managed to do here. So about, I think, about an eight? Yeah, about an eight, because I've, I've got some abilities on the go that I think I can I can play out with what I've got here. I'm optimistically a seven. I feel like I could go wrong. I'm horrendously <laughs> a three. Let's go. <laughs> so this time we rotate the other way. We yeah? rotate anti-clockwise now. 
Oh, a little bit. Oh, wow. Yes, baby. Yeah, so, so I've seen quite a few cards that have lost a lot longer than they should have. Again, that just means we're trying to figure out the, the planning on it. Yeah, now because there, there, there's some cards that are... No, I don't want to say anything yeah, that gives anything away. It's that, oh my goodness, man. The other thing is, you're also thinking about, should I draft a color type just to get yeah. those symbols for combos as well? I've been struggling. I've been literally going far too wide on my colors. Mm. These three packs, I think, were all pretty incredible. Yes. <gasps> what? How is this back to me? How did none of you draft this? In my head, when I started this process, I was like, how many cards did you hand over? Three? Three. Uh, I was like, you can play any number of combos. That's going to be amazing. I'm just going to play with like 30 combos. But actually, that's really just not how this works. You need to I, have the symbols. I mean, it depends on the spread. Sometimes yeah. you get lucky in the US. Uh, Hoover up a ton I'm, of the same combo, for example. Yeah, you just pays yeah. for itself over and over. We well, see, I'm, I'm building a base and I've got at least one combo in there, which I'm hoping that base will hopefully run off of. So yeah. we'll see if that's going to yep. work. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I'm not so sure if you're just really overselling or you're actually <laughs> no, no, no. a strategic mastermind. No, no, I am looking at it going, oh, yeah, if, I play, one color. Yeah. if I play this with something else that I've put in earlier from a different color, I see them interacting. Well, it's just you hope they come up together, and if they do, you're just loving life. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the a lot of the comments I would have are on cards being passed up, as opposed to what you actually picked. Yeah. Or how soon they were picked. What the hell? Bang! I want that. Whoa. That's beefy. That is beefy. Yeah. What um, happens if you picked up more than two heroes? Do you get to choose the two that yeah, you're yes, using? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I'm, yeah. trying, I'm starting now to think about what are my 10 cut cards, like what am I getting rid of, what I want to, yeah. what colour do I want to kind of cut out of the equation here. And annoyingly, I think I've left myself with a very even spread of multiple colours, which mm. is going to make that cut really difficult. I really I need to commit. very specifically choose like two, three colours that I've been working with. Yeah, three is what they're yeah, focusing on. That's, I messed that up. So just to check with you, whenever you're playing cards in your turn with your two actions, can you play the same named card twice in draft or is no. that still no? Okay. Still no. I think I have can every colour. <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, the rainbow started. Can you test the rainbow? <laughs> <laughs> kind of regretting some choices now. Yeah, dude, I'm, I'm kind of pretty messy. Yeah. <laughs> this is the thing with drafting. You're trying to leave your opponents the chaff, or at least what you think is the yeah. chaff, <laughs> yeah. from the pack. I mean, it's really inter interesting to see when people pick up a card that they kind of regret, but because I've seen kind of what all through picking, yeah. I know that, oh, that really screwed someone else up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually amazed at how much more time you guys are taking to actually think about your drafts. And still making the wrong choices. That is the... It really? Is it's the, the, really the, going see, there? It was a real polite <laughs> insult for Justin. Justin was insulting us by being kind of slow about no, no, it. No, I, I, just like... No, I was actually trying to insult myself a little bit by going, am I maybe just firing from the hip here and just missing everything? No, no, that, no, that, that's a bit of an exaggeration. Yeah. There, there have been some also very correct choices. Okay, everybody, I've sat down with Alan and Benny from Lightseekers, and now we're going to have a look at what I have drafted, okay? So uh, we'll, we'll get stuck straight into it. I will show you the heroes that I think I'm going to run in my deck, okay? Okay. So as you can guess, I've probably went Dread. <laughs> you have gone Dread. <laughs> yeah. So I've got three very, very interesting heroes here. So I've got Varilla. So her ability is uh, rotate one of your action buffs one step forward. So yep. if I have something that's going to pop some damage, I can rotate it forward and just get it a little bit quicker out the gates. Yep. Uh, I've then got uh, the Undying, which is move one discarded combo card from your deck to, uh, I believe, oh, from my discard, from discard. Yep. to my deck, and I take one damage for that. Or I can take two damage for Sicario and move two action buffs uh, from my hand into play. Oh, His is a really good one. I'm a yeah. big fan of that. It's, yeah. That's so Yes, yeah, so which other heroes have you discarded for this? You've yeah. already got a few on the side that we haven't... Uh, yes, yes. So let me move these out of the way. I will have a quick look at what I've, I've discarded. So those are the ones I'm going to run with. Out of what I drafted, I think I got like six cards that I don't really want to use. So I've got a, a Kree Ball Jester. Yeah. So I didn't really want to use him because the recipient must discard cards until they have seven left in their hand. I don't know if anyone's going to build a huge draw deck. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got Body Morph, which is a combo buff for tech. I don't have enough resources to do that. I've got a Hollow Tooth Dagger, which is a light item, which is no use to me. 
I got Leo as a hero. He seems like a nice one. He's shiny too. Uh, deal one damage to another hero. This cannot be increased by effects. So it's, it's nice to have a hero that you can just sort of chuck out a little damage on. It's not bad. Uh, I then got uh, Scoria, is that? Yeah, so same yep. effect, a different order. Same effect, yep. Uh, I then got uh, Anzi the Mender. Uh, your target takes one damage when you play a mechanical buff. This cannot be cre increased by any effect. That seems a little bit more difficult to pull off. Mm -hmm. And then I got Ancient uh, Ignu, yep. which is ability draw one card, face up. If it's an Earth card, heal for one. This cannot be increased by any effect. So it's sort of the reverse. But I looked at those and I thought, I'm not really seeing the cards here that are going to work with these. Yes, you narrowed down correctly, yeah, I'd yeah. say. Yeah, uh, so... Ignu can be really good, uh, yes. but unless you have plenty of Earth cards or combos yes. containing Earth. All right, so let me quickly run through what's actually in my deck. Okay, I'll read yeah. the names. I'm sure you guys <laughs> will hopefully know all the abilities <laughs> yeah. are near enough. Yes. If you want me to stop on it, definitely will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the first one I have is Corrupted Wildlife. Yep. So it's actually a combination combo card. It is. Uh, so it's a combo defend. Draw two cards, gain three additional actions without uh, any stat restrictions. So what does that mean? Yeah, so stat restrictions refers to the basic and superior elements. Mm -hmm. If you have basic element, you can only play one of that element in a turn. Mm -hmm. If you have a superior element, you can play as many as you want. You're unrestricted, right. up to your cap of actions. So if you have right. two actions, they so can both be of the same element. Or if you have three or four actions, they can yeah. all be of that element. So unrestricted means that the basic cap is lifted. So even so, if you don't have basic, say, poison, mm -hmm. you can play as many poison cards as your actions. So basically, this is an incredible card because it's going to let me A, draw two cards, give me a third action, uh, uh, actually three gain three actions. additional yeah. actions. I assume it's... Ah, so it's a combo defense, so it's not something that's going to sit about. Yeah. But it means that it gives me a turn where I can just go wild. You can yes. do what you want. You can play multiple of the yeah. same. Everything you is can, basically yeah. superior for yeah. you. And you can also pass those three, just draw four more cards at the end. Three for the three actions and yeah. one because you played a combo card. Yeah, and then the symbols at the top here, I'm seeing uh, the, dread the purple symbol. and the green. Yeah. Is this a wild symbol or yeah, is so there a specific any, symbol you need? Any dread mm -hmm. element can pay for that and any nature element can pay for that. So you could so, use poison, death or shadow to pay for the dread part. Okay. Animal, forest or soul pay for nature. Perfect. So I made the right choice having that. Yes. Yeah. All right. I then went the for a shred of night, <laughs> which is a combo buff. Uh, you can't be affected, at, you can't be attacked, increased damage and healing done by shadow cards as shown. So I think that's quite useful because it's given me a plus two for three rounds and I can't be attacked. I then grabbed amplification hex, increase rotation, values of your other buffs by the rotation. So for the first two it does nothing, then it's doing plus three, then plus four. Yep. yep. I then went for rigor mortis. Uh, instead of discarding store cards under this card, defend ability. Uh, rotation healing, increase this by the number of cards stored under this card and move them into the discard pile. So I thought that might be a nice way to get some mm -hmm. healing built into my yep. deck. I then went for this one, Ritual of Awakening. This was the big one. I saw it and I, I just looked at it and went, ha! Ah! <laughs> so it reads, gain one additional action if you're reduced to zero health, yep. heal for rotation, which is 7777. Seven, seven. Uh, Instead of being defeated, this card cannot be removed or returned by other heroes. Yep. yep. Now it does cost a lot. It does. Yes, but if I get it out, it's got a really good. Yeah, ability. it's a good way of keeping you keeping you in the game when you start yeah. to get to that yeah. low. And for those four turns, you have three actions a turn as well. Yeah. Well, you get one extra action when you play it, and for the next three turns, you have three actions. Exactly. Well. So yeah. I just it just looks so good. It'll get you out of a tight spot if you're, yeah. if you're in one. Uh, knowing as and Colin, I probably will be put into a tight <laughs> spot quite regularly. Okay, so very quickly, the other ones are pretty much all singles. So I've got a uh, little bit of healing, doing some damage. I've got uh, damage to the target. Mm -hmm. I've got uh, attack ability. Yep. Uh, so it's two damage to another hero. You can increase this by two and heal yourself by two. Uh, remove one of your buffs in play. I've got quite a few buffs in here, so I figured yep. that was a nice one to yeah, have. Yeah, it's good, yeah. Uh, Shadow Supplier is rotation cards. Uh, increase this by the number of buffs you have in play. So I get to draw. So yep. building yep. a bit yep. of draw in there for free. Yeah, your fourth good. corner, you get however many buffs you have on the table, so yep. you can really pull your deck up. Yeah, yep. so looking at that, there's an interesting... Uh, so it's worth pointing out Shot of Night. Mm -hmm. uh, its defensive capabilities are really nice. Mm -hmm. uh, it will only affect your Night Lurk in terms of dealing damage. Mm -hmm. uh, now that's where you would rob a little bit from other people, I can confidentially say. Yeah. Uh, there was a very nicely overlapping uh, dread combo 
Mm-hmm. That you unfortunately missed out on, which I think they won't even run in their deck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they yeah. really screwed you over with that one. Yeah. Well, th- this is the thing. After we've played our games, I'm sure we'll trade about. So oh, yeah. a- after we're done, yeah. tell me yeah. which it is, and I'll maybe trade yeah. them yeah. a shiny for it. Right then, I moved on to some nature cards because nature. I've played the deck. I like the feel of the yeah. deck, and so I wanted to get some of that in there. So I went for a spectral web, which is a burn. Uh, your buffs can't be removed uh, or returned. Spectral Web is a really useful card. Like it's really a useful. nice light defensive one that doesn't cost much. Yep. Uh, then I got correct Coercive Spirit, was it? Coercive Spirit, yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, so two damage. The recipient moves three buff action cards from their hand to their deck. So it lets me clear out someone's hand a little bit if they've got mm-hmm. something nasty. Uh, Moss Rage Defender, just because it's so useful to be yep. able to pop yep. down yep. some cheap defense. Uh, I then went for Fungal Leecher. Uh, deal rotation damage to your target and rotation healing. So basically, I can damage two, damage two, heal two, heal two. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Yep. Which is nice. Yep. I went for two of those. Yep. Just because I think it's nice. Uh, Corvid Conspiracy is just really handy. It's given out a nice bit of damage. Yeah. So, I mean, you have a lot of synergies here already with Amplification Hex. Yes. Which is increase the corner values of cards. Yep. So, because you have a lot of buffs here with multiple corners. Unfortunately, uh, Fungal Leecher has the same two corners as Ampex, so they can never completely overlap, because you can't play them on the same turn. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, but you can at least you get, get one... Yeah, it, yeah. One, but oh. they also get double value, because they heal and deal damage. Yeah, I can, because I can use... Uh, yes, you can. Yes, yeah, yes of go. course you can. There you go. That's so, that synergy there. So assume you pick her, which you most likely will. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I then went for uh, a Reckless Spirit, yep. three damage, and being able to chuck away a buff from yeah, my opponent. Yeah, you need those debuff cards. You Gotta need to have used. those. Uh, this one is attack ability, rotation damage. Yeah. So... This one is a combo buff that I don't think I can really play. Yeah, the only way you can pay for that one is with these two cards. Wild card in nature and one course of... Uh, yeah, yeah. Course it's of a bit of a shame, but you'll always find that in a draft. Yeah. Uh, I then went for some grace. So I went for a sneaky Kree ball, mm-hmm. chucking out four damage that yeah. can't be blocked to Sandy. Kree ball infiltrator, deal two damage to your target, then at the start of your turn, if they have more than five cards in hand. Uh, it's just nice. Yep. Yeah. I then went for a frenzied Kree ball, which is, again, just more damage, nice and useful. Umbral Marauder, 6 damage is nice for a yeah, finishing yeah. move if you just get it into your hand. Uh, reduce damage by corners, yep. so yep. 2, 3, 3, just handy. I then went for this one, Thunder Slug, so it's a burned. You may remove rotation cards from another hero. Yep. So it's really nice, so I can go 1, 2. Well, the good thing with that is as well is that it's the only debuff card that's a a buff, not, mm. an, not an attack. So yeah. quite often people will stop you attacking, but with yeah. that you can still keep removing their buffs. Yeah. Uh, then went for the Storm Shaman, increased damage done to other heroes by rotation. Yep. So being able to chuck a plus four if I get yeah, the timing yeah. correct on it. I then went for some also, direct damage. Again, the one thing pointed out here is also that this will tie in also very well with all the buffs you have rotating. Because mm-hmm. you can obviously have several cards triggering with plus yep. four before you've even played anything. This, this was a bit of a theme I was trying to build. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next one I went for the Crackling Beast. It's some straight up damage. Uh, remove one of your buffs to increase it to three. If I'm throwing down a lot of buffs, I can just quickly bump that to yep. six for maybe a finisher. Yep. Uh, this one I grabbed the Astronomer. Uh, so basically, if he sits, I can draw four cards. It's just a nice way to mill through and get more options. I then went for the Skyward Observatory. Increased damage and healing done by rotation. Again, it's another way to buff stuff up. Mm-hmm. And uh, it takes both values on Fungal Eater. Yep. Uh, then I got the Spectral Guide. Uh, so draw one card when this enter plays. And defender defendability, draw one card. So I can have it be clunky and go bump, bump, and get extra cards in my hand. Yep. I then went for the anti-gravity snail. This is one that hung about during the draft for quite a while. I think, Benny, you were really surprised about yep. that. Yes, because I mean, you have two other gravity cards in the entire deck. So you're not like too likely to draw that gravity, are you? Yeah, so the chance of... Because four damage and a card draw is yeah. really good value. Yeah. Now, the same goes for that Astronomer. That was a run for a very long time. Yeah. And the value of four cards is really high. Yeah, and, and again, because... giving nothing away while you're doing it. Yeah. Yep. So uh, moving on, I also got the mage ship. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's just damage to your target. If it sits around for four, it'll pop seven. Uh, then I went for, oh, let's just stay with the same color. Uh, Yukona. Yukona Oracle. Yep. 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 Uh, so reduced damage received. So it's just a bit more defense to be chucked out there when yeah. I get it. Uh, the unstable defender, again, more defense, but I will take a little damage off it. I then went for the ramparts, mm-hmm. more defense. I then went for the Leaking Generator. At the start of your turn, deal two damage to your target and take one damage. Defendability as uh, healing to and remove this buff. So basically, it just lets me knock out some harm and maybe just heal myself if I need to. The last one I grabbed here was a Magma Spitter. Cheap six damage and I take two. 
Yeah, but if you've got all that damage, if you've got quite a lot of defense there, so you can take the edge off that, and uh, exactly. six is a really nice hit to be able to get so on the side. Let's have another yeah. look at the ones you passed out on for those. Yes. Uh, right, yeah, so... Yes, I, the only real question in your deck, I would say, based on the cards you have here, is mm -hmm. whether Beast Control is better than Creeple Jester. Because uh, Beast Control is very niche for your deck. So Beast Control, yeah. which one was it's that? It's the two That's animal, because uh, the only way you can pay for that is ah, using yes. Corby Conspiracy Absolutely. and... Uh, Yes. Uh, so corrupt wildlife. There it is. There it is. So, what's it doing? Uh, it's very good. It is a good card. It's yeah. So, these are the ones we're considering then. Yeah. So, beast control is attack ability, doing damage out for that. If I get it out, it's nice and heavy. The question is, do I have enough damage built into the rest of my deck to sacrifice that? Uh, the other thing I want is, to say yes. Like you end up with a lot of damaging buffs. It depends on how much removal the other people drew, because yeah. You, yeah. they're not restricted to three removal cards. Yeah, so this, it depends on how many cards you recall seeing going around, basically. Uh, not very many, to be honest with you. But again, uh, you always have that that yeah. first yeah. pack open yeah, where yeah. it could be a removal. I'm having it. Yeah. yeah. You know what? If I have this, it's going to be playing on my mind <laughs> while I play. Should I be holding cards well, the, to play this? And the Creeble Jester kind of goes against the uh, Creeble Infiltrator, uh, Infiltrator yes. doesn't it? Yeah, because so. those two contradict each other. Where Creeble mm. Infiltrator is, you, you want them to have more than five. Different times of the game. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so that is a tricky one. Like, if you take this, you kind of have to hold on to Crop Wildlife and mm. uh, Yeah, if I, if I plan to use it. Yes. Yeah. Now, so obviously, think... obviously, you do have quite a lot of card now. You have... Uh, uh, you have a Shadow Supplier, you have an Astronomer, mm -hmm. you have Anti-Gravity Snail to just go through the deck. Uh, I can't recall anything else, but mm -hmm. there are yeah. some solid, because of the amount of buffs you have, mm. uh, that, and especially if you play Sicario and can get more into play, yeah. uh, that Shadow Supplier could make you draw a lot of cards. So it might just be that getting to the two yeah. animal cards won't be that big of an issue. All right, I'll tell you what, I'll go keep with it. my plan. Keep I'll it. keep it. Yeah. I'll keep it, because if I pull it off, it's, it's one of those cool yeah, things yeah, you pull out. Now, having seen the deck, yeah. we're down to the brass tax, which is yeah. which heroes? Yeah, so how much do you rely on your combos is what the Undying asks. Because basically, the real value of Undying here is that you're restricted in combo payment, mm -hmm. uh, but you don't have that many combos. Mm -hmm. So the only real value, or the only really, really got strong four value. four of them. Uh, you got uh, six, I believe. Six? Okay. So you have four, four dread combos. Mm -hmm. And these two we talk, just talked about. Okay. Fair um, enough. So the Undying is quite niche. Mm -hmm. You can obviously get this back to your deck to mm -hmm. then pay for this if you decide to play this early. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but Sicario is very tempting with the, mm. with the amount of pressure you can get. Virilla for the, the timing. Yeah. yeah. So I think I'll drop the Undying. And those will be my I'm two I'm biased, I'll always say go with Sicario, just for, the amount of just for the amount of buffs you can get out on the field so I suppose quickly. I have enough healing in there to yeah. keep me alive yeah. for taking that two damage. Alright, Sicario? Also, if you have damage reduction in play when you do it, yeah. you don't yeah. take any damage. Alright, well that's the two heroes in the deck. There we go. Okay, well that is my draft complete, as you can see. Even though I love playing, uh, playing the tech, yeah. uh, I didn't limit myself during the draft. I didn't look and say, this is my type, this is what I have to draft. No. I was flexible with it, which yeah, is the taken, biggest bit of advice yeah. I can give. You've taken a lot of dread in there, so I'm looking forward yeah, to it. So, yeah, so forward. thinking back to the cards I saw going around, mm. uh, one kind of surprise you didn't take, mm. given all the buffs you have, are the two founders of time that went around, which is rotate a buff yes. two steps backwards or forwards. I was gambling with those. <laughs> I was looking through, and there were other okay. dread cards in there that I was thinking, I could grab this, but I think this is more useful to have now. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so... It'll be interesting to see who's playing those and who yeah, has yeah. buffs that are going to play well with those. Yeah, because obviously but, the good thing with those are they tick through those corners, so yeah. as they go through them, they do, do yeah. the damage or the yeah, healing so, them. Yeah, so dream scenario for, for you would be that uh, you've got a, a buff that ticked onto a corner of Ampex, so the mm -hmm. corner has increased already. Let's mm -hmm. say Fungal Leech sure did six damage, six healing, mm -hmm. and then you rotate it backwards yeah. with the Phantom Time to do six damage, six healing again, yeah. and then forward with Virilla again for yeah. six damage, six healing again. <laughs> exactly. For 36 point swing. Obviously quite a niche scenario, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but it could happen. There's potential there. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, th this is me, this is actually the first deck I have drafted yeah. in years. Yeah. So, score out of 10, how did it do? I think it was good. I, I'm... Yeah, so uh, thinking back to the cards I saw you miss out on, uh, it is, it's good. It's, I think, I think it would be a strong contender, this little draft tournament. Okay, out of 10? Out of 10. Uh, you're gonna go, Benny. You're the pro here. Yeah. So because some cards I wish I'd seen you pick up, I'd probably go 
seven. So I'll so take, now, I will now, take a seven. Now, now that is, I'm going on five is actually average good. Yes. So you're, you're, you're above, above average, average. I would say. That, that I will take. <laughs> I will gladly you're take You're above it. average. Well, that's what that's most a, people tell me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I tell you what. Uh, I will trade out. We'll get one of the other lads in here and you can have a look at what they drafted. Yep. Awesome. Okay, so it's my turn. Start started this draft, I was not happy. <laughs> Middle of this draft, I was super excited. End of this draft, I think I went back to unhappy again. <laughs> I'm not sure how this is going to look. I'm, I can't wait to see what the other guys all have when we get to play a game. Because right now I'm measuring only against what yep. else, what other cards I saw. Yep. So let's chat about heroes first. So um, I actually tried to be a bit sneaky. I tried to... Oh, you've already mixed it up. Yeah, well I tried to not draft heroes initially thinking that if I spend my time getting really good cards, I'll probably get a chance to get heroes later. Mm -hmm. And still I ended up with five, which shocked me. Yeah. Uh, the way I'm thinking about going is just taking the natural 33 of yep. Uruvs. Uruvs. Um, and then I think it's probably going to be increase, either, either heal any hero or damage any hero. Not sure which. So Leo or... Mm -hmm. I, to be honest with you, I think I'm going to go quite aggressive, but I'm okay. curious to see what you guys are thinking. So at the moment, I'm thinking high health, loads of damage, and try and survive long enough to just deal out yep. lots yep. of death. Okay. Okay. So that's that's the initial initial plan. One ability, yep. no passives at all. Yeah. So yeah. So you because I did have yeah, I had the passive of Nightshade, which was take one damage when you play a death card with 32. But her ability is really that she has superior in two types. Yes, so it's like, and you beat the 32 starting health with moves yep. anyway. Yeah. So. Yeah, pop those aside for a second. Now, chatting about the deck overall, my initial plan was to go with my kindred spirit, that is mountain. So, <laughs> I have gone very much into... You just love mountain, don't I you? I just That's... love mountain, man. To me, because I've gone with high health, wow, look I've gone for very much combo mountain. So, lots of combos, lots of damage. And I thought picking up dual cards the same means one could pay for the other. Yep. So... If I manage to draw both, I'm going to be in quite a nice position. And supported by a small array of just um, flame attacks. Mm -hmm. And if you're holding a combo card, um, I can do more damage and move a combo card back to my deck. Yeah. And I had lots of combo cards. Yeah, so these are both really nice. Yeah. Getting overlaps like this is really valuable. Um, overall, this is damage reduction, which I'm not really that caring about. However, the Rock Fists, um, five the rock fist damage. Is good. The downside is, however, that I really getting the two Earth mm -hmm. is a bit tricky for me. I have no other mountain yeah, cards. You must have those yeah. two of these yeah. five combos. So this is a bit, a bit wonky. I would have really liked to see another mountain or crystal common card, and I kind of feel a little bit at that. I definitely, um, I definitely struggled a little with trying to synergize early and then forgetting about the symbols and then yeah. didn't get the symbols I needed really later. Yeah. And I'll, I'll come to that in a second because I made a couple of mistakes. Yeah, because <laughs> you passed up on, I saw Boulder Feast you passed up on. Oh, really? Uh, Six oh. healing. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Was, there, was there a prism cannon going around? Um, was there a prism cannon going around? I cannot remember. You were ve much better at remembering during that than I was because you were looking at my hand I was passing away yeah. and then asking me, well, those two have clearly taken those two cards because I can see what you've left. And I was like, no, I can't even. <laughs> so the next, I must admit, this was tough for me. So let me pop. I got this card very early on. Mm -hmm. So Chilling Curse, which is just really, really strong. Select another hero when this, when this guy enters play and then deal damage to that hero. But that hero can only take one action per turn. Yep. Um, which I thought, that's brutal. I want lots, yeah, lots of brutal. Dread, lots of Storm. And I just struggled to get them. So I, I have... why. <laughs> someone else playing a lot of Storm, a lot of Dread. So here's what I've got to support the Chilling Curse, right? So this, this, this card was really a, a big one for me. So with Storm, we've got a bit of a weird spread. So a couple of combos. And initially, I did say to Benny, and I mentioned this, um, that I didn't want to go down the buff route. I yep. thought, you know what, I'm going to try and avoid buffs. If they draft lots of buff, buff <coughs> removal, I'm going to try and just get lots of attacks, lots just of defense, it. And, yeah. and focus primarily on Mountain's ability to do damage and healing with attacks and yeah. try and avoid the buffs a little. Mm -hmm. I realized that maybe wasn't the best play, <laughs> and, I, and I accidentally kind of hampered myself in the first couple of drafts. But with the attacks, combo attacks of blue, I've gone for increased damage and healing from combos, more damage and healing with buff here. And just damage and more damage with the ability to discard a combo to increase it by combo cost. So lots of potential burst damage. Yeah, so I mean, this is nice because you're mostly going to end up at some point with combo cards you can't yep. play anymore. Yeah. Which gives them value. Mm -hmm. uh, um, obviously, running an item, you only have 
So the chance of playing Storm Shaman and Evaporate yeah. on the same turn is never going to happen yeah. because you want to wait before you play yeah. this one. Uh, so the, the only value of this would be to help paying for cleansing yeah. wind specifically. Yeah. And here's where I made a bit of a, a foo pas. This is where I made, messed up a little bit because I also took Cold Snap and Healing Rain. Oh yes, you showed me these. <laughs> but I left, I left myself in a bit of a position where I realised I didn't have any more water. Uh, so this, the Storm Element can wild card. Yeah. yeah. So you can use the Storm Element on Chilling <gasps> Curse to pay for any one. Yeah. Okay. Storm Ooh. Element. But that would be, I would hate to use that to pay because I really, well, I think that could have potentially so much power. Yes. Um, you can roll it back though. So this, okay. this is this is my quandary. These are my only two cards, ignoring Chilling Curse, that have water on them, and I actually do not have two water symbols except. Yeah. For chilling yeah, so you could use Healing those Radiant. two to pay for that one, yep. and after that, use this mm -hmm. and one of your three, four air cards yeah. to pay for Healing Rain. Yeah, uh, unlikely. That's some sp specific so, draw there. Yeah. I'm actually thinking about just completely dropping these two. Uh, it's probably wise. Okay, so I'll set those aside for a second. Uh, I'm really disappointed by that. I think I really misdrafted, but I think at one point that uh, Cold Snap came back to me and I was like, how has that come back? I can't believe it. I'm going to have to draft it now, not thinking about yeah. symbols. Yeah. Um, I don't think there were that many water cards going around at all. No, and I assumed one of the other guys were mm -hmm. eating them all up. I mean, um, I've seen, I recall two very mm -hmm. vividly, the very first card and a bubble fish, but yeah. That is where they are. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Uh, on the dread side, then, so some buff removal. Yeah. Uh, these are ones that I think I, so, I said a couple of times to you, Ben. I was like, should I take a common over like a rare here? Yeah. And I was like, I think I really should. Like, I think yeah. buff removal is you important. You have to have buff removal, yeah. like. Um, I also took uh, a weapon for a poison, which is okay. But the big card for me here is actually the Shadow Prism. Um, yeah, so the difficult thing here so Shadow Prism has poison, death, and shadow. Yeah. That's a great way to pay for other. Uh, yeah. Dread combos. Mm -hmm. You unfortunately don't have any. Yeah. But the only way for you to pay for it is with Perfect three cards, those yeah. two very specific cards. Maybe if you run an item, yeah. but that's so niche because again, you mm -hmm. only have a single yeah. poison, so you're not gonna. You don't care about superiority there. Yeah. Uh, so paying for shadow presence can be very difficult. It's very nice. These two are great pickups. Yeah. Uh, that was one thing I was. I saw a lot of buff removal cards going around mm -hmm. the table and not getting picked up. And yeah. With experience, you, you realize uh, how Yes, you yeah, absolutely. Pick pick up as soon as you see them, unless it's something incredibly vital to your deck. Wow. And so, I, I was humming and so had almost a lot. entirely, my first picks are always removal cards. Okay. Play uh, games until I have at least no three or so. Uh, so but, I'm feeling, unfortunately, like these two colors are kind of a bit... Uh, if I draw badly, I could end up really caught. If I draw well, I could end up yeah. rocking. So, um, I mean, you have... Chilling cards is a great little mm -hmm. intersection there. Like, the Venn diagram here is, is nice. Yeah. Uh, Storm Whisper is very good for Chilling mm -hmm. Curse, yeah. uh, and also for Shadow Prison, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't see a realistic playing Shadow Prison. Maybe, maybe you will. Oh, okay. But the, so the risk with it is, if you choose to play Shadow Prison, mm -hmm. you will have to pay for it uh, with either Chilling Curse, mm -hmm. which is a probably Painful better combo, to swallow, yeah. uh, or pay for with a Shadow Puppet. Yeah. And that means that you're sending back your buff removal into your deck and yeah. you can't rely on it for the emergency when you might need it. Yeah. That's the big risk there. Oh, okay, so let me uh, set that aside for a second. And you probably also then. need to run another item. And at this point, you're talking about running two items. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and am I capped in draft? How many items I can run? Uh, uh, no, you can have we can have two points equipped, okay. unless you have Lexi. Okay. There was a Lexi going around, so you can have three points equipped. Okay. Uh, but the items are... You're not going to equip them. You're okay. only going to use them the paper compost. Yeah. Well, on that front, let me put the dread aside because I was feeling bad about the dread. And now I'm feeling really bad about the dread. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, on a little bit of a lighter front, I th well, I'm going to say it, I think I did a little bit better with the tech side of the deck. Which so some more removal, some time worm for discarded combos back to hand. Yeah, so that um, could help with your payment issues. Yeah. yeah. Um, Fountain of time made me very excited, but generally what I ended up trying to do here was avoid the mechanical symbol and get Holy Explosive and Time, mm -hmm. which I think I did reasonably well, which means the Time Flicker um, and the, uh, yeah. sorry, the Overwhelm Blast should be reasonably easy to get off, I hope. Yeah, so seeing here, so uh, individual consistency is really important in draft. Mm -hmm. Having a card that is just on its own really good, which yeah. Time Flicker is mm -hmm. one of the best examples yeah. of. That is a very good value. Um, time Worm, as mentioned, could help with some of your combo issues, because mm -hmm. if you need to pay for if, for example, you run yeah. those two water combos, yeah. the only way to really get more water back is with Time Worm. Mm -hmm. okay. um, now, I can't recall how much, because the Bomblings, you want to set up to 
create uh, bursts yeah. when you use attacks. I yeah. can't remember how many attacks you end up having, because the problem with Orion Blast is that yeah. that is one of your yeah. attacks. Well, I think, yeah, because uh -huh. it has to be, it can be any attack though, right? Yes. So it could combo even yes, just yes, with my basic. Some, yeah, you have some fire ones. I have, Actually, you have three fire I have, yes, I have three yes, basic yeah. fire plus... Yeah, um, yeah, yeah no, so Orion uh, Blast is probably solid. Okay. Uh, again, I don't know if you want to have yet another item in there. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that one I was more leaning towards because yeah. I do have so many explosive yes. symbols. So this one will help you with two combos, yeah. which is better than the case where it's only for one. Really. Yeah, okay. Um, oh man, feeling feeling yeah. on edge. So now, now basically, what I had previously decided before we got together was to burn all of these cards. This was before I realized that Cold Snap and Healing Rain were probably not going to be playable. So I'm making a big mess here now. Just kind of tidy up a little here. So I had decided that pretty much I was going to let all these uh, Astral cards go. Yep. Um, however, once I realized that Healing Rain and Cold Snap probably weren't going to combo very well together, um, I thought I would keep Paralysis Bug, because I like it a lot. Yep. Draw a card, select a hero when it comes into play. That hero can't draw cards or defend for a turn. Yeah, may do nothing, but it's a card for a card, and it may inhibit. Yeah, and they can't, they can't draw. So yep. if you see an upcoming card draw effect, mm -hmm. you play that right before that yep. happens. You stop it. Um, more increased damage or healing, um, which that, is kind of... That one can be very nice. Yeah. yeah. Especially if we say that you run Chilling Curse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you increase the damage on two corners. Now, that only pays off for four, but yeah. you can obviously play more stuff on top of that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then we've got three. <laughs> three combos. I think I got it... Because I got quite lucky initially with the mountain getting like-for-like -like combos, it's like, combos pay combos. This would be great. Yeah. Man, this yeah. is, if I'm using combos to pay for combos... Did you take that too far? <laughs> uh, I, I, I think I did. And what I've ended up with is a ton of combos I can't play. Yeah, so... Live and learn, eh? Yeah. I mean, so, they, they all have some overlap. The problem mm -hmm, is that yeah. you have not much left to fill in the yeah. Yeah, missing pieces with. Tidal Shift is a very nice combo. Mm -hmm. uh, that is, is very good. Again, draw is such a powerful yeah. effect in, in draft because because you run all these crazy yeah. overlaps of elements, just being able to draw mm -hmm. is really valuable. I do feel like letting Solar Wind go and yes. keeping these four might be the way I, I could go. Because at least uh, if I get... Well, you have no solar left. So oh. these could pay for each other, but okay. nothing else. The yeah. other one is dead. Now, you could use Evaporator to get rid of the last one. Mm -hmm. So you have a way out to... I could use... Place. What was it? Evaporator, the uh, lightning card that lets you discard a combo to do more damage. Oh, yes. Okay. So that can, in theory, be used on the second one. Mm -hmm. But you rely on drawing two specific cards to pay for each other. Yeah. Uh, now, those two specific cards are very nice specific mm -hmm. cards, <laughs> admittedly. Yes, yeah, so that, that is a that's a tricky one. Uh, that is very tricky. If Benny's having you're, double tricky, I mean, my draft has been a bit ropey. you you are relying on a lot of luck here. Yeah, I'm feeling. Uh, I'm the feeling potential is good. The potential is good. I got so many lovely mountains early, yeah, and then your, I just got no more great. mountains like, at all. Yeah, mountain combos are really nice yeah. here. Okay, so I need to get rid of two heroes or three heroes. Sorry, so I have two left, and then I need to get rid of eight cards. Um, so yeah, so three of those are heroes already. Are we, yeah, are, we, are, we, are we happy with the heroes that I had put aside? Did you go with again? So it was uh, the ones I was going to yes. go with. Yeah. Leo and Uru Ooths. Um, actually, yes. I realized I had a couple of cards left. Forget. Oh, hold on. Sorry. I realized I didn't show you all my blue cards. Hold on. I might have oh. undersold myself ever so slightly. I still had these. Oh, there I you go. I undersold myself a little bit. Um, oh, yes, I have some more lightning. Uh, yeah, let me bring back my blue, uh, my storm card. There you go. It looks Again, like it's un unfortunately, out on us. unfortunately, no water still. Okay, no, no, these were in the original. Oh, were they oh, in the original? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, they were. Yes, yeah. we got okay, those. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, storm whisper, also very nice to go with some of those. Of unaligned unaligned combos. I have a couple of unaligned, which are, again, just quite aggressive, trying to stop them healing, trying to get the kill. So, four damage, recipient moves one card of an element of your choosing. Ugh, I mean, yeah, I have that to one choose is an element, but. Yeah, so you need to pick an element out of 18 and hope you hit right. Yeah. Uh, which is quite tricky in yeah. draft, uh, but it's certainly better than some of the other stuff we've seen, so... <laughs> 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 four, four damage is not terrible, and you do have you do have a Servitory, you do have um, Storm Shaman. Yeah. There are reasons you want that four damage mm -hmm. anyway, okay. so that's all fine. And so. also, uh, you do have two Everrock Relics. Uh, yeah. They're not the best value, mm -hmm. uh, but at least you can send in combos that you know you're just not getting any more. Yeah. Value out anyway. Okay, so let me see. So if we get rid, so we're getting rid of these three heroes. Yep. Um, I need to get rid of eight other cards then. So I think Solar Wind's gone. Uh, Cold Snap and Healing Rain are gone. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like after your council, uh, well, Shadow Prison. Well, I've seen of, more now. So okay, oh. so like well, I well I don't have much hope for that Shadow Prison. <laughs> <laughs> it might not be in a, one, in a one off game. Yeah. Just let me beat Justin, man. Just let me get that Shadow Prison into play. If he beats me, when I yeah. get to play it, it's a moral victory. Yeah, and 
You think it's a keeper? That's right. He's got some similar I, cards. He's so hoping to pull out like that. Is he, he's he's so, yeah. hoping, it, hoping oh, a dream. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's yeah no, I mean, yeah. Someone else in this room would have had much better use of that card than you. <laughs> Well, that, that, that's, that's a good a thing good for you. Thing that's a good me. thing yeah. for you. That is a good um, thing for you. So, so at this point, it's really tough to decide. So, <laughs> how many? Yeah. So, obviously, because my normal, my normal way out of this would be to just lose all the items. Oh, but, okay. Oh, yes, but, right. yeah. Uh, some of them might be quite intricate to paint for yours. Yeah, your I feel like I feel like the, uh, and the problem blasting is that, cannon is one I want to keep. Yeah, blasting cannon I would keep. And uh, I'm kind of crackling rod. How many yeah. items do you carry? How many, yeah, sorry, so sorry. I definitely I want to get rid of the uh, dripping yeah. dagger, but yeah. that leaves so me with just a single poison. No, yes, but uh, if we get rid of this, yes, but you also have chilling curse, which is a wild card. Yeah, yeah. So chilling oh, curse. I have to will... use it to pay for a combo. I'm going to cry. I mean, it's not gone. It goes oh, you back get it, you can get it back. You can do it again. Back at you, uh, yeah. But you don't have that much card draw, so you're going to sluggishly be working with. And interestingly, it. I think second round of the of the the draft, the boosters, I turned to you and I think I said this keyword, which was draw. Yeah. I love, and I yeah. want to delve into the and draw. I fully agreed. And I didn't pick and up any draw. <laughs> and then a stormer came in, and no one took it. <laughs> uh, and I, and it would have been perfect in here. It really would have. Yeah. Uh, uh, now, the thing that Shadow Prison is going for it is mm -hmm. that it goes well with Skyward Observatory. Uh, they can overlap nicely. A, a slight problem you have with Skyward Observatory is that you have to really make it hit it, for it to return its full value, yeah. which you might struggle yeah. with, but you really want to get at least six points of value out of that. Uh, if it's a four, it's all right, mm -hmm. but you might, might as well just play it a... Mm -hmm. A five direct damage attack, damage. four yeah. damage, five damage, yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, a way to get value from this, without because you don't have that much healing, mm -hmm. is to hit it onto a rotating yep. pop. So you could get two corners yep. of Shadow Prison and then play attacks on top of that. Mm -hmm. The problem is that you need to draw a lot of cards to get that point, because you need to draw the specific cards to have Shadow Prison in play. I think part of me forgot also, I wasn't sorry, playing sorry. Dolu. Yeah. <laughs> He's not helping you, he's just giving you more questions now, isn't he? He's yeah. just pulling you in yeah, lots no, of different directions. Yes, you, you, have, you have a lot of... Yeah, this is, this is <laughs> tough. Not for the right reasons. <laughs> when you've destroyed the thought process of the designer of the game, you know you've done something special. Take the Shadow Prison. It'll I, be fun. Yeah, I, I kind of want to get rid of it. I'm not going to... I'm leaning towards <laughs> reliability, and I'm... Yeah, and you have... Like, so, yeah, so... The key of draft tends to be I mean, don't don't rely too much on luck. Just okay, go for yeah. yeah, go for consistency. Go for cards that are individually yeah. okay. so reliable. Let's... And mostly you cover that by drawing a lot of combos of the same order. Yeah, a lot of overlapping combos, which no one really managed to do. I don't think. Like I don't <sighs> think there were. I thought I was on this. Was, this was very yeah. light on combos. I have to say. I did think like, like this, I was. This yeah. is a great. Like this looks. So I thought great. I was on to a winner. Yeah. I was like, this is gonna be amazing. <laughs> and then no more mountains turned up. Like uh, I was, I... there was a boulder piece that went around a few times. <laughs> <laughs> I I think I got it in my head right that. I want to kill. Let's do lots of attacking. Let's do lots of attacking and healing yeah. together. And I don't want to waste time healing. And completely forgot yeah. that an Earth symbol would have been the bomb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would have helped you a lot. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so I've got my three heroes out. Yeah. I need so, to get rid of uh, seven cards then, is that right? To get my uh, uh, five more cards. Five more so cards. So there are three heroes. I've gone, that's three. And obviously you can. Yeah. So you have with 45 cards. You yeah. want to have 35 for your deck, two heroes, uh, and eight cards left to get rid of. Three of those are heroes, they're gone already. And then five more. So paralysis bug is one of these. I want to keep it. Guarantees something. Yeah, yeah. I want that. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just yeah. So you need to get take one of these back. Um, I mean, looking here, the two safest cards I would yeah. say are those two. Yeah. Uh, Cheapest payments. Followed by shadow prison. Uh, assume you don't get rid of any items. Can here. I even pay for tidal shift? I even have. Uh, I... Oh no, the other two solar are in your two yeah. other combos. Yes, you can't do that one. There you so, go. Well, it's, that's so that's that's resolved like... itself. In <laughs> yeah. Uh, Unless you run. But yeah, you have. Three... I don't think I can pay for healing rain either. Uh, chilling curse I... is your only only way. <laughs> He's trying to get you to use that chilling curse as payment. But, isn't I really don't want to, man. But yeah, so. So what do you take instead? Like you could bring in the shadow prison. Take the shadow prison. Take the shadow prison. Take the shadow take prison. Take the shadow prison. Just go all of damage. If I play, if have... I play the shadow prison, I just drop my deck and walk exactly. out and be like yeah, shadow exactly. prison. Yeah. Yeah. Just leave. You're yeah. Done. yeah, I think so. Because the problem with getting real healing rain is that, um, except for those, uh, I'm trying to remember now. So you have, you, wanna, you have the damage reduction cards in impenetrable shield and crystal skin. You have two stream of tantos which will heal you for seven each. Yeah. Other than that, do you have any healing? 
I told you, Danny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, healing no, was he not high. Yeah, so, yeah. so you need to spend, <laughs> a, lot, so so you need to spend yeah, you need to spend a long time drawing cards, but you have nowhere to survive in the meantime. You got the, you got the um, stream of Tantos. That'll, you know, that'll Benny, be. Benny, Benny, Benny. Uh, I but no, no, I, I would love to see you play Shadow Prison. Like you're so far down the hole now, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I might as well just play Shadow Prison. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of, I kind of completely forgot that I couldn't take two damage and draw two cards every turn. Yeah, I think. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, that would have been nice, with, wouldn't it? Because like, I mean, these will buy you time. Okay, they definitely will. If any of the other guys have drafted Dolo, I'm gonna flip the table. <laughs> uh, Dolo is exclusive to the starter deck. Yeah. Oh, thank yeah. goodness, that saves me a bit of pain. Okay, so I think we're there. So we got rid of. Uh, three solar, two storm, three uh, three heroes, and I just need to hope that I draw really well. Yeah. Okay. What's your rating for this one out of ten, Benny? I'm intrigued. <laughs> I mean, so I gave the previous one a seven. So I was thinking I can't give this one seven or higher, but yeah, that. Yeah, I, I made that really easy for you, didn't I? <laughs> just, yeah, yeah. yeah so Anything less than a five, and I'll be dead. Sorry, just say. Four. I mean, just say five. Just say four. Just, no, don't say four. <laughs> give me a four. Okay, five. But grudging this, this five. This deck gets a five. <laughs> yeah. Okay, hi guys, and uh, now we're ready to look at Coco's deck, Coco's award-winning deck. <laughs> the award deck of winning. dreams. Award-winning? Well, we'll see, yeah. we'll see. Okay, so to start us off, I have the blue selection. I think uh, based on the first card I chose, uh, which was this one, the Heroic Starfish, a shiny card with just amazing art. Uh, this is mainly what I based all I my I like my entire you, deck on. I like it based <laughs> off the art you like. <laughs> it was it, yeah. I was going with the heart on this one. Yeah, yeah. It was the first one I saw. I thought I had to have that one. Yeah, I mean this is a good selection. Uh, so you've got a few combos. Uh, so you got three combos, and you're covering all the elements on them. You got some lightning. Although you only have yeah with the item you have three lightning cards. Items are always a bit questionable in draft because. They don't provide much other than combo payment. Hurricane Spirit was one that I saw going around for a long time and just wished someone picked up, and eventually you did. Yeah, you get a lot of turn off of that, don't you? Yeah. But this one, could, Mari Bard, could be quite interesting in this particular game because some of the stuff that people have drafted. Uh, yeah, so the, this one will disable yeah, the so, buffs? Yeah, so dormant means that uh, the buffs don't apply their effects, they don't rotate, they don't restart, they just considered effectively not there. Mm -hmm. So it's a good uh, chance to start removing some. Yeah, so some uh, things that can't be removed, for example, can be removed if you first more about them and then remove. Yeah, uh, yeah. I imagined in draft there would be a lot of buffs being played, and so I was yeah. looking for those kind of cards yeah. that either remove them or yeah, disable so may, them. Yeah, yeah, worst case it will delay them. Uh, best case you bypass some protections and then remove stuff as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, Mostly so. I was going for just these cards that had the minimum yeah. requirements, the so I could just cards. go straight out. Yeah. I wasn't relying on drafting the exact hand yeah. I could get to play the combos. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my cards in this deck are going for this sort of yeah, the uh, basic strategy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I mean, Murky Waters might be quite difficult to play. You've got two water cards by themselves and two combos that overlap a bit. Uh, but yeah, overall, like, many of these are nice cards. Many are nice, and also Overload lets you make use of combos that are otherwise useless. So you've done a good job working off of the artwork that you <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's, that's yeah. all right selection. So, like, yeah, yeah, I didn't do too bad. You can wish for some better common payment, perhaps, but... Yeah, I thought I didn't do too bad picking yeah, up the blue. Uh, given what I saw going around, cards. It couldn't have been that much better. There wasn't bubble fish you missed out on. So next up, let's take a look at the tech cards I picked up. Right, so this is actually a really nice selection. Uh, Bone Shewer, perhaps a bit weak because you can't play two mechanical cards. Uh, unless you've drafted a mechanical superior hero. I'm not sure yet. Uh, Tarax fix is always useful. Yeah, fix is really nice. Fountain Time is really good with things like Michael Machine. So this is a great little setup. Yeah, so this one rotating one action buff yeah, so up you to can two rotate, steps backwards yeah. and forwards. And it doesn't have to be on yourself, so you can use it to rotate away someone else's buffs as well. Yeah. Uh, just remember that if it goes through their corners, they uh, still it activate. does activate on yeah, the every time. Yeah. For example, playing the Maniacal Machine will do nothing, and three damage, three damage, three damage, and then you can play Fountain of Time to go backwards for three damage, three damage, and then yeah. go forwards again for that's, three damage, three damage. <laughs> so, that's so a lot of damage. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so there's a lot there, yeah. Uh, Family Alchemist. Uh, you have this card a combo, but they might be useless at that point anyway. Uh, yeah. I think I, I did pick up a, combo, a couple of combo cards intentionally to use with this uh, one. So you don't have to discard a combo card. So so if you don't one. have anything in your hand... Oh, oh it's optional? You skip, okay. yeah. Yeah. So if they say discard one combo card to deal six damage, then you have ah, to. Ah, I see. Okay. But these are just two individual effects. Uh, yeah, and I was looking for more cards like this that let me draw yeah. cards. Yeah, so draw cards are really strong. Like There were a few uh, cards I saw going around that were like really nice card draws. That is no one picked up. Like astronomer, Spirit. astronomer, Hurricane Spirit. Uh, but anyway, this is nice, assuming you can get enough combo buffs in play. As long as you can make it draw, draw you two cards, 
that's all right. Yeah. You won't you won't be more, but two cards is it's paid for itself at least. Yeah. I'm I'm relying on getting the the storm combos out to yeah. Uh, yeah, so you got, that one. yeah, Storm Wall and that is a great combination because Storm Wall makes makes it so you can't be attacked, which means they can't remove this. Mm -hmm. uh, so you got some safe card right there. Uh, because it triggers just immediately, you also get one card when you play it. Okay. So if you have combo buff in play, when this goes into play, you get one straight away and then one every turn thereafter. Every turn is still there. Yep. Yep. So pretty useful there. Yeah, and yeah, Time Worm also good for getting those uh, combo payments in. So that's pretty nice actually. Yeah, move the last rotation yep. discarded combo card to your hand. Yep. Yeah. So getting more cards, cool. always useful. Good so job again. That's the tag. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, then we have the mountain cards here. Yeah. So here, are those mountain cards that someone claimed didn't exist. Yeah. yeah. I've I've had this used against me very effectively. So the prism cannon doing eight damage after four turns. Uh, yeah. That's pretty strong. Yeah. yeah. It's nice we got now. the usual combo with colossal ritual sight onto prism cannon to make it eleven, mm. and then hit more on top of that. Uh, yeah. Removal cards really valuable. Yeah. Always valuable yeah. in, in draft. Because uh, you never know how many come up, so until you have a few, it's worth just taking them straight away. Because I'll give my use gun luck and not get any. Yeah, I did see two removals. This is another one. I think this might have been the only one I managed to get, though. Uh, I think I think I've seen you. you had, uh, yeah, I've seen you pull a Pathfinder as well. Okay. So you okay. have a potential one more uh, if you if you go with it. Pathfinder is not is not a great removal card. I mean. Crystal Leech is better, yes, isn't it? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Especially in saw, draft format. Yeah, because I saw Shadow Puppets go around a few times, and yeah. <laughs> definitely would like to see some figures. <laughs> uh, Pathfinder, is that the Astral? That's yeah. the Astral one there. Yeah. Well, it, it can work well in a straight Astral deck, but obviously in the draft format, Astral yeah. is less likely to get the synergy that it needs. It's a lot more niche. So, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, that one will most okay. likely only let you remove one. Yeah. Yeah, so again, like these are good core value cards. Yeah, that's cool. And then a Not couple of peeling combos. Cards well. Not too many combos. No, no really, really trying to avoid yeah, the combos yeah. well, and putting myself a in a situation where I couldn't use them. You know? Yeah, I mean, yeah. this draft actually had quite a lot of combos that were really hard to play. Yeah. Talking uh, of combos, here comes. Yeah, so this is one where you will struggle a bit. That fungal uh, spores. Yeah, because you got fungal spores need two forest, one soul. So you have two forest, one soul here, but then you mm -hmm. have no soul left to pay for this one. Yeah. Uh, if you want to play this one, you have to use those two, in which case you don't have a. Uh, uh, in which case you don't have enough because the. Oh, actually, let's see if. It, no, yeah, there's there's no. Yeah, you can't get yeah. them both. No more soul to actually, pay for. Actually, no, no, you can. Yeah, if you play spiritual turmoil first with those two, then these go back in your deck, so then you mm -hmm. can use these to pay for this. Okay. But it's a very. Yeah. Fixed. Yeah, it's very specific, very specific situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah so they have to come in the exact right order for you to play them. Uh, yeah. So I imagine that one of these will not see play. However, you do have overload to discard one of them for more yeah. damage, uh, and that, that is was... just like either one is worth doing because overload will let you discard one for the cost plus two more damage. So overload does eight normally. Um, yeah. You want you probably want nine out of one of those to be worth to bring back the whole value. But if you get rid of fungal spores. Then you have paid for not only the card draw itself, but also made up for overloads, uh, slight lack of damage there. Yeah. So, and I think that was my thinking. So you can't get use out of it. Yeah. 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 So yeah. you can still make good use of that card. I didn't want to rely too much on being able to draw this exact yeah, yeah. combination yeah. together. Yeah. yeah. Good thinking. Yeah. So those two combos are probably going to be quite tricky to pull off. Then we have these astral, and I think this is where the pathfinder comes in. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So these. Yeah. Uh, Antigravity Snail is really nice in draft because you're so unlikely to draw gravity cards that it's almost a guaranteed four damage to one card. Yeah. Yeah, um, in the situation where you don't have an Astral yeah. deck, yeah. Um, Pathfinder and Astral Priest will not see their full value because they have no Luna cards at all. Mm -hmm. uh, Astral Priest is just a plain three, so that's quite weak. But Pathfinder is still useful because you can still trade it one for one, mm -hmm. ideally with a combo buff, in which case you, you gain momentum. Um, yeah, just being able to remove one buff because they've got yeah. something stronger. Yeah, you do want to, you know, really even useful. if it is weaker than Crystal Leech, you do want to pull yeah, um, debuff you, you, cards yeah. whenever you yeah, can. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Paralysis Bag is actually really nice. So you can time it in. So whoever you select, uh, in this case your opponent, can't draw cards while this is in play. And that includes cards from, from card effects. So for example, you saw an astronomer go around. If someone has an astronomer coming in its fourth corner about to draw four cards, if you play this, they get nothing at all. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Just uh, getting the timing right on that one. Yeah, right? obviously, it's there aren't that many card draws out there at the moment. But anyone with a low hand, this is a really yeah. nice card. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Looking good so far. Yeah. Uh, and then lastly, we have two dread cards. And an unaligned. Yeah, and uh, just a yeah. unaligned. Yeah. Soul thief. Yes, good value. Four healing, two damage. It's reliable. Nox and assassin uh, can be very nice depending on how much. Dispel they have and how many buffs you have. 
Um, so that is, you want to trigger probably twice, I, at least once, but pro ideally twice. Um, and that might be hard to do, but it's nonetheless. Yeah, I, I wasn't able to keep track in my head of just how many other removals yeah. the other people yeah, so, got, so I got this one just in case. The uh, problem is as well, when yeah. you see those removals get to you, you kind of want to get them anyway. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've seen, if I remember right, we saw two Shadow Puppets go around, a Craze Bomber and a Thunder Slug. Thunder Slug triggers two removals. Yeah. Uh, there's also a Cold Snap, but I don't think that would get played. Uh, so You've given away all the information. <laughs> well, he's, he's seen the boost Yeah, this is true, I suppose. He's seen, he's seen the go around. We've all seen the cards. Yeah. Uh, so... So based on the cards you should have remembered, but did see, uh, <laughs> there is potentially five removals out there if you count the double corners from Thunderslug. So you can get value from that. Yep. And the Creeble Infiltrator, I imagine, will be pretty good here because I think uh, there will be a lot of stuck combos that will just generate big yeah. hands. A lot of people trying to draw the cards yeah. necessary yeah. to play the combos. Yeah. yeah. So they're going to have more than five cards, and then they'll be able to do the two damage. Yeah. Yes, that's, yeah. that's quite a nice one. So I, as you can see, I tried to avoid getting too many of the too many combos. The, the yep. dreads that required yeah, yeah. you know playing shadow yep. buffs or other cards mm -hmm. to trigger them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then lastly uh, is the two heroes I've chosen, yeah. which of course are blue because that was the my initial plan yeah. is to go for yeah. the blue ones. So yeah, you probably you could actually see some value from these uh, superiors. You probably won't, but there is a possibility, which is quite uncommon in in draft. Uh, so good starting health, thirty three, and this ability is, is quite nice. Uh, yeah. it's two damage to another hero if they yeah. have no buffs. Yeah, so it's, it's a good way to just get some rival pressure out mm -hmm. if they're not doing anything themselves. Okay, and now you can take a look at the cards that I've decided to discard okay. yeah. and tell me if this was a, an amazing choice. So mainly they were just cards that had requirements that I couldn't fulfill, and so I was never going to be able to play them. Yeah. Uh, like this one, I never saw the... Yeah. yeah. Other than the Stormcaller here, you have no other animal cards, and it's yeah. not yeah. worth bringing in this one to maybe, maybe be able to play this card. Yeah. Like this yeah. is a fantastic combo, but yeah, not in uh, yeah, I'd agree here. Like yeah. items, relying on one card to yeah. be able to play yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, getting rid of items is just a good thing in general. Uh, yeah, you can't. You don't have Luna cards. You can't Lexi play that. Wasn't going to get you anywhere really in this. Yeah, you do have two gravity cards, but you then have no reliable healing to actually activate that. Lack of mechanical means yeah. So this is all makes sense. Okay, perfect. Well done. Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So after all that, what would you grade me? So this is this is really tough. Uh, so we saw Justin's dread deck. Uh, Oh, Which in my head I might make it better than I than it actually was. Oh really? You're I, it, are you are you back? Are you uh, back no, so now? based on how uh, terrible mine was. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, no based on I'm, how I'm, terrible as it was. Yeah, <laughs> I gave I gave as a a five. You didn't. You gave him a four. Uh, <laughs> in my head it was a three or four. Uh, <laughs> but to be nice, you gave him a five. So you need to be higher than five, obviously. But that's that's not a problem. Uh, the question is, you or Justin? Like, mm. did I beat Justin? So I'm trying to remember now. It's it's been a little while since I saw his deck now, and I'm trying to remember how reliable and consistent I think his deck will be. Uh, so I think you're either sitting on par with him or just below him. So it's a 6 or a 7. Give him a 6.5. I don't want to do any... <laughs> 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 right, I, I might be over having his deck in my head now, but let's go with the 6. 6, oh, okay. Six. Well, I'll take that. Yeah. That was good. But I might eat those words. <laughs> <laughs> this could be I hope this is full better. reversal. Yeah, I mean, if, if As wins this, my reputation is down the drain. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, we'll see. I think the Rainbow deck has got a pretty good chance here. Okay, well, thanks, guys. Right. Uh, we're going to take these decks to the battlefield now and uh, see who comes out the victor. Thanks for watching. Uh, write your comments down below and tell us what you think. We'll catch you in the next one. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now, and be sure to check out beastsofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.